Hey, what's up, everybody? Brother Keith here, Pastor Keith, um, here back again for another video. I uh, got something very interesting I want to share with you guys. I've been, um, haven't been putting up any videos in a little while, been in a lot of prayer and fasting, and I will uh, explain why, what's going on. Um, I have things going on in my personal life, obviously, but there's things I'm perceiving in the spirit concerning uh, a lot of the wealth transfer things we've spoken about and even some of the cryptocurrencies and things like that. Um, I want to tell you some dreams and stuff. So let's just pray real quick before I begin. Father, I just thank you for this moment in time. I thank you for the listeners. Father, I just ask that you would just give everyone a, a ear that can receive, Father God. And Father, I ask that if anybody has a spirit of discernment to discern some of the things of the dreams, uh, let them feel free to, to let us know and to engage the, with us, Lord, to put their comments. And Father, we thank you because we're one body and we all have to work together. And we give you thanks, Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now that we got that out the way, this is a team effort. I'm coming to realize even more when I read the comments for Brother Drew, Sister Sharon, um, as well as my, some of my other brothers and sisters out there, Lord. I'm noticing that it's a team. We're, and that's scriptural. We are of the body of Christ. We are one body. Hands, arms, eyes, we all make up the body of Christ. So we do at times, we have to work together. We, there, this is not a solo mission, a solo flight. Um, I would like to tell you sometimes you got to be careful of some uh, particular Christians or people who think that they're the one with all the answers, like they are God's chosen prophet and, you know, God can't speak to anybody else. And that's actually not true. Um, God can speak to whoever he wants uh, in the scriptures in Acts chapter two, Joel chapter two is an Old Testament witness. He said he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. So when God says he's pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. He's going to put his spirit on everybody. He could talk to everybody, okay? But without going into the long Bible story, let me tell you the first dream. Uh, first dream that I had, uh, just, just just a few days a few days ago, but just, let me back it up, sorry. When I had these, before I had these two dreams this night, I had asked the Lord concerning um, so the wealth transfer, what's going on, um, the timing of things, are we close, you know, or are we just totally off? You know, I was very honest with the Lord, like, you know, because I'm feeling my spirit. We're getting closer to something going down. So I'm just like, you know, what's going on, Lord? Because I've got a lot of things in my personal life that I've got to take care of. And then there's people and uh, ministries out there that I know I'm supposed to finance some of their uh, uh, things that need to be done. Some of the things that need to be done upon the earth. And I'm just kind of like, you know, Lord, I've got this. The school is out there in Africa. They need X, Y, Z. My brothers need X, Y, Z. We got to build it. We got to do this, this, and this, and this. You know, I'm I'm just keeping it real with the Lord. You know, my personal life as well as things for the ministries that I'm associated with and people. Um, so as I pray this dream, this I have received the first dream. First dream I had picked up my 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 bag. I have a little small bag. It's like a little tiny little gym bag. Um, and in it, sometimes I would put my wallet, my cell phone, uh, maybe a bottle of water for when I'm just going to go out in, in the town or maybe go to the gym or something like that. But I, I carry this little small little little mini gym bag around sometimes and I put these things in there. So in the dream, I went to my bag and I was reaching for my wallet and then I ended up pulling out some change out of the bag, which is odd because I don't keep much change on me. Normally, that's something I just keep in the car, you know. But I pulled out a bunch of change. But when I pulled out this change, there was a bunch of silver coins in the change. And then I was like, oh, pretty cool. You know, silver coins in, in my bag. I'm like, oh, wow. But then on top of it, one particular coin, when I picked it up, it was a big gold coin. So when I looked at the gold coin, I'm looking at this coin. I'm studying it. One side of the coin said United States of America. And it was like... Uh, gold, one ounce gold, whatever. And I was like, oh, this is cool. But when I flipped over the coin, it had the nations, other nations inscribed on the coin. And I can't remember all the nations, you know, China, Russia, Japan, I can't remember all of them, but had multiple nations inscribed upon the coin in different areas. And it was split like this. Excuse my, I had to use my kid's chalkboard. But one second, once one area was trees and jungle inscribed upon the coin. The other area was mountains inscribed upon the coin. 
The other area was islands. That's water. It's supposed to be oceans. Oceans and islands inscribed upon the coin. And the other area, I think it was like houses and buildings, like a city. I try, I'm a little blurry on that part. I think that was the, the other part of the coin. But it was split in these sections, just like an X, kind of like an X for XRP. But it was split into sections, just like this. Boom. One X going through and had these areas divided. And this was the other side of the gold coin. And this thing, it was really cool in the dream because even though it was a big coin I was holding, it was lifted like three-dimensional. Three so like the mountain areas were sticking up off the coin, like you could rub over the mountains and the trees part was, in, in, it was sticking up off the coin and you could like rub over it and feel it. And, and this was pretty cool, but it was all made of solid gold. And I'm looking at that and it had multiple nations, which I can't remember the name of the nations, all inscribed on the other side of the, this gold coin. So if when I looked at that and then the dream ended. So if you have an interpretation for that, um, feel free to put it in the comments. I've spoken to a couple of my prophetic intercessors and stuff and I'm um, getting different answers on that. I think this dream could be uh, layered. Um, uh, when I say layered, um, I'm, I like to call myself a dream specialist, but I'm still learning. All right. And I still talk to my prophetic intercessors. I've found out there are some dreams that can have a double meaning, okay? And there's there's nothing wrong with that. I've ha actually had one particular dream that had a triple meaning. And I had spoke to three different prophets, and every single one of them were correct about the meaning of the, the particular dream that I had. And they gave three different interpretations. And they all the, the, the interpretations each played out in a different part of my life. So that was pretty cool. So... I'm not limited to just one answer. So feel free to leave in the comments what you think this means, okay? Because this dream, I, I, I think it's pretty much related to the, the wealth transfer stuff, I, I think. But I'm, I'm being humble to ask whatever you guys think. Uh, the second dream now, this one, this is the same night. Second dream, I was inside a, and I'll turn the, I'll turn the camera a little bit so now we could not worry about the <laughs> inscription. The second dream, I was in like a, a, a New York City, but this dream was reminded me of the TV show, uh, New York Undercover. And uh, New York Undercover uh, was a TV show in um, uh, the 90s, uh, early 2000s. Uh, this was based in New York City. Uh, the, the stars, um, the, the detectives was one Hispanic detective and one Af African-American detective. And it was a really cool show uh, based in New York City and very riveting topics they always had on the show. But long story short, that was the scenery. I was one of the detectives, but the lead detective was this big black dude, big brother. And I'm borderline thinking he was an angel because I've had ang angelic uh, interactions and dreams before, but I'm, I'm not sure, but he was a big brother. And he, he reminded me of the um, the detective from the New York Undercover show, but he was a little bit bigger in stature, in stature. And when he, so he, we showed up outside of this uh, like small little restaurant and it was like a small restaurant, but it had a living area in the back of the restaurant. This was in New York City. So when we small at this little small little restaurant slash diner, we showed up at the door and he says, yo, he says to me, he says, all right, we got the, we have the warrant. And he pulled up the warrant. He said, we got the warrant. We got the warrant. I was like, okay, cool. He said, we're going in now. So we went to the door and the two employees of the restaurant came to the door and like, can we help you? He says, we got a, we got a warrant. We're coming in. We know the stolen goods is in there and we're, we're here for your boss. We know he stole the, the silver. And the, the one of the employees tried to lie and say, oh, well, we don't know what you're talking about. The other employee was like, uh, like nervous, like, like he gave it away. Like, you know, we're guilty. We know he's here. So the thing about those two employees, one of them looked androgynous. If you seen the passion of the Christ, you remember the, 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 the character for the devil, for Satan, he had that androgynous look. So that was one of the employees at this restaurant. He looked very androgynous, very demonic. So the big dude I was with, he had the, the arrest warrant and he said, we're coming in to search the place. We're coming in now. And he just boom with authority, pushed the guy out the way. Boom. The two employees pushed him out the way and we bum rushed the place, went in. We went in with the warrant. And then the big guy who's leading, he says, I think he's in the back room. So we bust through the restaurant, went to the back room, 
when we're in the back room, we can see it's like a, there's like a living room area, kind of like what I'm, I'm in a living room right now. We're in a living room area, and then there's a inner another door going to like a bedroom area, like another another area. He said, "All right, Keith, I'm going in." And so he went into the back, and I can see kind of like supernaturally through the door what's going on through the spirit. There was a big hoard of silver that was stolen back there. It was in the back room, and that's where the the head honcho had stolen all the silver. So he went back there with the warrant and I heard a big tussle and fighting and he yells out to me. He says, all right, Keith, I got it. We got it. We got it. I was like, all right, cool. And so he came back out and we were happy because we knew the case was closed. And then in this living room area, the the walls were like a dirty green, almost like a demonic chamber. And this big guy, he all of a sudden pulls out a big thing of paint and a roller brush of white paint. And he starts painting the wall and making the place totally clean. And he's painting the walls and it's huge. And he's just painting the walls and making it beautiful and white. And the dream ends. So if you have an interpretation about that, feel free to put it in the comments. One of the interpretations that I've received, um, I'm just telling you this from one of my intercessors, was that we're kind of like in that stage where the wealth transfer is just about is just about complete. But here's one of the things which I believe in as one of my inter in intercessors believes, but I'm looking for additional um, uh, 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 words, whatever you have, I'm, I'm, so I can pray this thing through. One of the things that I believe that this interpretation was is we as the people of God concerning this wealth transfer and all the things. Remember what I asked the Lord about that night before I had these dreams was concerning the wealth transfer. Are we close? What do we should be doing, etc. I'm asking the Lord for advice. And we have to pray this thing through. All right. I did. I forgot the left out. I was doing a little bit of fasting. We have to pray this thing through and push it through with authority. As we, and I mean it like You've got to be praying right now. Do not sit on your high butt. You sit there just like, oh, well, it's a done deal. It's going to happen. We're good. And no, we can't be lazy. And Christians, I'm sorry, but sometimes we are guilty of that. We get very lazy. We cannot sit there and just think, well, it's a prophetic word. It's already been given. It's, gonna, it's a done deal. It's going to happen. No, we have every demon in hell fighting against us, especially concerning this wealth transfer. The enemy loves to work off poverty and misery. These are places where he likes to work. He does not want to see the people of God, any of the Christians who are receiving some of this prophetic word on wealth transfers, he does not want to see us empowered. They are fighting this thing in the heavens tooth and nail. All right. I'm going to quick even give you a quick one. I spoke to one of my prophetic intercessors. She seen in a, in a vision, and this is one of the sisters who had the dream about uh, electronium. She's seen the vision that literally angels and demons are battling concerning this wealth transfer. There are literally accusations going up to the throne of God that the, the, the enemy, the, the devil himself, he's literally saying why we can't have this wealth transfer. He's putting up accusations against the church. He's putting up accusations against your own household. He's finding every little legal excuse to say, no, this can't happen because you've got half the church supporting abortion. Oh. Yeah, I went there. There's accusations of all kind where he's bringing it to the Lord and saying, no, you can't give them this. That Half the church is moving in unforgiveness. They won't forgive their brother or their sister. Oh, no, you can't do that. Half the church, there's people in the church committing adultery and fornication, but they're saying they're Christians. You can't give them that blessing. He's looking for every legal avenue to say no, why we cannot have it. This is a time, especially if you're listening to this message, you've got to be in prayer Make sure you're, you have no sin in your life. And if there is sin, get rid of it, repent of it, stop it. Um, the Bible lets us know the Lord searches the hearts. He looks in your heart. So there's no fooling God. Don't think you're just going to sit there and say, okay, I'm sorry for my sins today. Just let me get this wealth transfer. And then you'll go back to your activities of sinning tomorrow. No, don't play games with God like that. That blessing could then become a curse. So don't play games with God. We want to be making sure we have a, a life where we're living clean. We're living holy. Um, we also want to make sure that we are praying and fasting this through, going back to the prophet Daniel. 
The prophet Daniel showed us a great example of this. Even though he was sinless, even though he was God's man of the scene, a man of the hour at that time, he was the, the prophet, one of the, the most well-known prophet in the area of that time. Daniel still had to pray and fast to get the blessing. If you read in the scriptures and you read in the book of Daniel, there was one moment the prayer and the, the, the assaults against his prayer were so intense. Literally, even though the prophet had prayed and spoke it from his mouth, the devil had sent the prince of Persia. The prince of Persia, I'm, I'm just telling you from my understanding, and you can pray about it, do your own study and research. The prince of Persia is a high-ranking demonic principality. You could sometimes say a, a high-ranking fallen angel. He wasn't Satan himself, but he's right under him. He's a high-ranking uh, individual where the Bible records that Michael the prince, Michael the archangel, had to do battle himself had to come against the Prince of Persia and they had a clash in the heavens because the Prince of Persia was hindering Daniel's prayer. He was trying to stop the blessing from coming through. That Daniel had, was praying and believing it. No, he's praying, but he had to pray and pray and pray. And the angel had to go forward to help push that prayer through. I'm believing that that dream I have is, is, is indicative, is, 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 is an example of what we're speaking about. We as Christians, we have to pray and engage these things to push this through. We cannot just sit there and assume that, oh, we're just going to put a few dollars on ETN or XRP or uh, Luna Classic, and that's it. We're just going to be millionaires tomorrow. Just that simple. No, we have to now pray it through. If you're hearing me, please do this. Engage in fasting and prayer every single day. If some of you cannot do the fasting every day, and fasting is biblically is um, refraining from food. If you can uh, skip a meal a day, skip two meals a day, or just make a designated like a designated day, you say I'm not going to eat anything that particular day, like uh, this tomorrow's Friday, so I won't eat anything uh, all day Friday. I'll just drink liquids, or you know whatever you can do. If you could just do one meal a day. I just got off, I uh, just was doing a, a fast for eight days straight, um, one meal a day, you know. This is, there's different ways you can mix it up. Some days I'll do no food, but I'm just giving you examples, you know. Do it, whatever you can do. If you can engage in night prayers, night prayers, I'm telling you, uh, you can look up uh, Brother Apostle Joshua Selman. He's an excellent uh, minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He gives lessons on night prayers. Night prayers are serious stuff. Remember, when you read in the scriptures, when Jesus, what was Jesus doing sometimes? Jesus was praying in the late night or the early morning before the sunrise. All right. Night prayers are a time of when there's serious warfare going on. And that's time when you can really pray. If some of you pray in tongues, great, do it. If you don't pray in tongues, that's OK. Just pray in the English regular or regular words that you've given whichever nation you are in on the face of the earth. Just pray. Things happen when we pray. You need to be praying over the Gary Gensler and the SEC and the XRP. You need to be praying over Luna Classic, the team, the developers. You need to be praying over the Electronium, the team, the developers. You need to be praying for these exchanges, praying that these exchanges don't get hacked, bind up every spirit of hacking, every spirit of theft. You got to pray over the exchanges you're using, pray over your ledgers. If you're using a ledger, you have to be praying over these things constantly. And most of all, you need to pray down every demonic principality that's trying to hinder the wealth transfer. Let me say it again. You must pray down every demonic principality that is hindering the wealth transfer. Pray them down. Rebuke them in Jesus' name. Loose angels to destroy them in Jesus' name. Start speaking that wealth transfer. Say, it will come to my house in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every spirit of poverty out of my house in the name of Jesus. I will be a blessing to the church in the name of Jesus. I am the head and I am not the tail in the name of Jesus. You got to start calling these things Say, I mean, it's got to come to a point where literally when you're talking to your friends or family members and they say something to you, just say, yeah, I'm, I'm right now I'm working on where I'm going to put my investments. They're looking at you like crazy. You got to start speaking these things. Just speak it in faith. Literally say, I'm, I'm looking at where I'm going to put my investments. I'm looking, for, the, the, I'm looking to, for a new church that I can help build. 
I'm, I'm looking for a, a, a ministry I can help uh, build out in this so-and-so country. Start speaking these things. Some of you are going to have friends and family going to look at you like, this person is tripping. They are bugging. This is stuff I've been doing. I'm speaking it out of my mouth. I've got friends and family members looking at me like, he is totally lost it. They don't understand. I'm speaking it. I'm decreeing it. I'm doing it during the day. And at night, I'm in prayer. All times of, all times of the night. It could be nine o'clock at night. It could be three o'clock in the morning. I'm in prayer. I'm engaging to bring these things to pass. These prophetic words, a lot of times, a lot of people in the body of Christ, we don't understand. Prophetic words can be challenged. Let me repeat that. Prophetic words can be challenged. You can have someone give a prophetic word. And as a believer, you can sit there and say, yes, I received that prophetic word. But there are times where there are demon demonic principalities. They're going to challenge that word. They're going to try to stop it from bringing it to pass. And if you are foolish, you, sometimes you can listen to a carnal Christian and say, you know what? Uh, see, that's a false prophet. No, what you don't understand, sometimes they're not a false prophet. That demonic, that, that demonic principality is battling that word. He's doing whatever he can to stop that prophetic word from being passed. So bringing this all back to where we were going before, do you guys honestly think, honestly believe the enemy of mankind Satan himself and all his demonic minion. Do you honestly believe they would like to see a wealth transfer? Hello? No. I don't care. I don't care how much you try to argue it. They don't. You have to know understand the law. Poverty is a weapon. Being broke can be used as a weapon. Every war on planet Earth. In the natural realm, wars are financed through natural means, natural money. There might be demonic forces behind the war, i.e. Ukraine, Russia, all that stuff. There could be demonic forces behind the men on that war who are pushing them to make these things happen, to put the war and the misery on the earth. But there's finances involved to fund the war. Well, it's the same thing for the church. The church hasn't realized that we are at war. This battle, as we go forward, bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ and bringing people to righteousness, bringing people to salvation, as we go forward in this battle, Satan hates it. He doesn't want anybody to know who Jesus is. He, 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 use, he uses Hollywood movies all day. And those, those salaries that those people get in Hollywood, some of those actors are extremely exorbitant. They're, they're huge. But he doesn't care. He'll pay them whatever as long as they can slander Jesus or cut him out of the cut him out of the movie scenes and the movie scripts completely. Don't make no mention of Jesus. We'll put mentions of every other person, but don't mention Jesus at all. In fact, we're going to use our movies to slander him. Now are you seeing the agenda? Because it takes money. Now, what if you with the wealth transfer, you and a bunch of Christians got together and said, we're going to create a new Hollywood. We're going to put good righteous good um television programming out there and movie programs we're going to take stuff we're going to take certain agendas out of these films and we're going to put in only good programs and we have the money now we can hire the best actors and the best crews this this war is fought on different levels but the wars financed with money their the money is is what's used to push these wars and these agendas so this is one of the reasons why you got to get in the head. The enemy does not want this to go down. He has to stop it. He has to try to stop it. But we have to rebuke that. So if you can receive what I just showed you, uh, um, thank you. I'm going to just tighten up. I'm going to release another video uh, probably sooner than we think. But this right here, I just want you to be praying, praying, praying. Take this seriously, what I'm telling you. Praying, praying, praying. Fasting. Throw it in. I need you guys to really hear what I'm saying. You got to throw in some fasting with the praying, throw it in there and pray morning, noon, and night concerning this thing. You got to start to speak it out, out concerning this wealth transfer. Speak it, decree it. The book of Job lets us know we shall decree a thing. It shall be just decree it. Speak it every single day. Speak it. And you can't say anything that lacks faith. 
Don't say anything. Don't fall into any of that negative writing you'll, you'll see on Reddit and different forums. Oh, man, you know what? Well, it's just a scam. Oh, man, this project is over. Oh, this project is this. Oh, call of cryptocurrency is a scam. You know, we're in a bear market. We're going to stay in a bear. Don't you know, if you look through the Bible, God always moves in bear markets? Read your Bible again. Whenever there's famine, there's always somebody of God getting blessed. That's the way it goes down in bear markets. That's when he always moves the hand because God's ways are not man's ways. He always does it opposite to the way man thinks. His ways are not our ways. God has always prospered people in the bear market. Look at Isaac. Isaac. The Bible says he, he, he was prospered. He was blessed a hundredfold in a time of famine. I keep going around and tell people right now, I'm an Isaac. I'm an Isaac. I'm an Isaac. Some people don't even know what I mean. I'm an Isaac. I'm an Isaac. I'm an Isaac. I keep saying it. Joseph. I say, sometimes I say I'm a Joseph. I'm a Joseph. Why? Joseph was another one. The famine came. Joseph really got wealthy. Him and Pharaoh really got wealthy during the famine. When that famine came of that seven year period, that's when they were selling food and all those things to people. Hello, people. Put it together. Put it together. In a bear market, that's when things go down. This is biblical. In bear markets, that's when wealth really transfers. All right. So if you receive it, I'm going to just pray, Lord, whoever heard this message. Let them get feel the fire of the Holy Spirit in them to be praying and fasting this through, Lord. Let them feel the fire. Let them get an unction to get up in the middle of the night to come against everything that the devil's trying to do to hinder this wealth transfer. And look, those people who can receive it, Lord, let them be a blessing even now to all the brothers and sisters out there who need help. Let them be help just compelled to bless people. Let them bless people now. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Peace.